Remember, I can take you out with just one shot whenever I choose. <laughs> oh, that'd be my honor. And don't worry, I hate cheating at the table. <laughs> you better. Ah, look who's here. The great hero of the Astral Express. The most dazzling trailblazer in all of Panacone. Oh, you're here too. Long time no see, friend. <laughs> Merely a greeting of platitudes. As long as you and I have an understanding. Well, let's set aside those under the table dealings for now, partner. Don't want to spoil the festive mood of the Charmony Festival. I agree. Now let's congratulate Mr. Trailblazer. I hear the family intends to thank the crew at the Charmony Festival. <sighs> well, my job was just to give the IPC an opening. Other things aside, I think I did a pretty good job at achieving this. While you were at Dream Flux Reef, we were actually close by. You wouldn't have been able to dig up so much dirty information without the help of a knowledgeable friend. But that emanator didn't pull any punches. <sighs> My body couldn't hold out too long. Otherwise, this would have been settled in a much cleaner manner. <laughs> no problem. And punishing the wicked and eradicating evil is a top priority. Would have been strange if we sat it out. Making an entrance like that, us Galaxy Rangers are making a comeback. Reckon you'll meet quite a few followers of the hunt on your journey. Do me a favor, pass on my regards, will ya? <laughs> Forget it. I'm not one to beat around the bush. I've got a score to settle with a high-ranking executive fella named Oswaldo Schneider. And this flamboyant fella here can help me find him. Uh, the feud between the Marketing Development Department and the Strategic Investment Department is well known across the cosmos. But what I didn't expect was the involvement of the Galaxy Rangers in this feud. Looks like things are about to get spicy. Thank you. And I also hope you enjoy yourself, great hero of Pinnacone. <laughs> I'll pass. But I do hope you guys have fun. If you don't mind, let's play a few rounds next time. Ah, yes. I remember you. Your performance at Herta's space station was... adequate, I suppose. Hmm. No wonder that gambler likes you so much. The Intelligentsia Guild assigned me to be an invigilator for the IPC's ambassadors. <laughs> Nothing more than an errand from the Office of Academic Affairs. Very well. The Charmony Festival is about to commence soon. Uh, take advantage of this unique opportunity. A blend of work and play is essential for superior knowledge absorption. The executives of the IPC and the Guild say that we are strategic partners. Yet, from my perspective, I am invariably the teacher, and he, along with you and every other individual, is the student. From this perspective, Venturing isn't what you'd call an ideal student. Yet, he's also not utterly obtuse. Alas, the void within him can never be filled by talent and knowledge. Let's hope he doesn't turn into a philosophical zombie. Ah, saying such a thing merely indicates that you have not truly grasped the essence of learning. The principle of balancing work and relaxation is scientifically grounded, with the relevant proof process detailed on page 21 of the 31,467th issue of the academic journal Star Caesar. Acquiring knowledge aims to enhance living don't invert priorities like those dolts at the guild. <laughs> then you'll excuse me. Well, 
if it isn't my old friend. It hasn't been long, and yet, here we are again. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> That's what I thought. I heard you guys pulled off a big stunt, cutting down the Oak family in one fell swoop. Such a pity I couldn't be there, or else I would have lent a helping hand. <laughs> Look how bustling this ship is. Not bad. Someday when I'm less tied up, I plan to host a grand party on my eco ship, and you'll all be on the guest list. Transform? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> oh, I, I understand now. You're referring to Aventurine's cornerstone, right? Sorry, compared to him, my ability is not as visual. Guess there is no harm telling you. The abilities of the Ten Stone Hearts as cornerstones are all different. Some can even read your thoughts, grasp your desires. So, be careful. Uh, now that I think about it, it was good that Branya got there when she didn't Bellabog. If she came any later, we probably wouldn't have ended up as friends. Hey there, lively guy. Welcome to the Bona Jade Exchange. What should I call you? What a unique name. So, mister, what do you wish for? And what are you willing to sacrifice for it? Oh, this is your wish. Sounds simple enough. Very pragmatic. Then, let's discuss the cost. To fulfill this wish, the thing I need is simple. The tail of an animal. Well, it's a two-legged animal with black fur, a round head, and long ears. It's omnivorous and is prone to mood swings. Most importantly, it has mastered the human language and can communicate. Bring its tail to me as collateral, and your dreams will come true. Bring us together again, Mr. Trailblazer. Hmm, the festival hasn't started. Let's take a quick break. Hi, we meet again. Who's that? It's really you! I knew I didn't get the wrong person. Yes, it's just, I didn't get the chance to say hello. There's still some time before the Charmony Festival starts. Do you want to chat?
to murder cases, a showdown with the IPC's ambassadors, the legacy of the Nameless, and a remnant of the Order who wishes to replace an eon-created paradise with a dream. You guys even ended up shattering the dream. <laughs> it's truly been quite a vacation. It's a good thing that you guys managed to overcome all those difficult problems. Congratulations! After the Charmony Festival's opening, will you guys be leaving again? <laughs> there will always be somewhere. After all, you guys are on the path of the Trailblaze. Before joining the Stellaron Hunters, Elio told me that this journey will tell me how to live on. That's all he said. As for the rest, it's up to me to find out. So, I'll pay extra attention to any leads that will let me live on. <laughs> This trip to Pentagoni is no different. Yes, sadly I was looking in the wrong place. But I did reap some rewards. Do you know Miss Jade from the IPC Strategic Investment Department? Bona Jade Exchange belongs to her. She told me her price, but... I know. But what she wanted wasn't my answer either. Of course, I want to live on. But what fate owes me, I want it paid back, not passed on. No one else should be involved because this is a grudge between me and fate. Speaking of which, actually, I feel that I still owe you a formal apology for that matter with the performer of the Iris family. Even the smallest of lies can turn into a betrayal as sharp as a blade. I'm sorry. Really? Then it seems what Kafka taught me was correct to me. Hiding is much easier than being honest. Yet, I still want to try expressing my emotions as any ordinary person would. It's that girl! Get moving! Arrest that criminal before the Charmony Festival's opening ceremony starts! I can't believe they've chased me this far. Looks like we have to say our goodbyes. Don't worry about me, just go and enjoy the ceremony. The script hasn't reached its end yet. We will meet again. I hope she's okay, but if it's only those two hounds again, she'll probably be fine. I'll send a message later to check in on her. Let's go attend the Charmony Festival first. Let's take a seat here. Everything is settled, but there's still some time left. Maybe I should take a walk? Forget it. I've done enough walking around already. Let's take a seat and rest for a while. Looks like I don't have to worry about her. Let's wait for the opening ceremony to start. guests, fellow family members, ladies, gentlemen, and friends from all over the cosmos. It's a pleasure to join you all in celebrating the grandest ceremony of the Amber Era, the Charmony Festival. Firstly, on behalf of the Penacony family's five major lineages, and on behalf of myself, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all our guests. As you all may have noticed, this year's Charmony Festival is far from regular. Thanks to the efforts of everyone, 
This celebration is unprecedented in scale, with factions from across the cosmos in attendance. Not only that, the customary opening ceremony held at the Penaconi Grand Theater has now moved to the Radiant Feldspar, the very airship you all stand upon. We invite you to express your warmest applause and deepest appreciation for O.T. Alfalfa, head of the Alfalfa family, for his selfless devotion to the Harmony's cause. What makes this festival so uniquely significant? As is widely known, the Radiant Feldspar had to halt its voyage due to an anomaly in the Sweet Dream, sparking widespread discussion in the Twelve Hours. Thanks to the hard work of Penacone's internal and external factions, we've finally gotten the dreamscape back on track, just in time for the Charmony Festival. And as they say, good things come in pairs. The Charmony Festival not only celebrates this achievement, but also marks the relaunch of the Radiant Feldspar. And finally, the last reason. Does everyone remember the Watchmaker? In truth, the family has poured their efforts into this festival just to commemorate this legendary luminary. The father of Penacone, Mikhail Charred Legwork, one of the legendary nameless who laid the foundations of Penacone. In the most bewildering times of the planet of festivities, it was he who descended from the sky with his companions, who taught us through trailblazing where freedom lies. It was also they who led the vanguard in the pioneering of the dreamscape, in exchange for what is now known as the Paradise of Harmony. It can be said that Penacone's splendid success today is deeply rooted in the trailblazing ethos the Watchmaker planted within us. Only by honoring this trailblazing spirit can we fulfill our mission and spread harmony to a broader audience. Aww, that's so nice of her. She's talking about us. Oh, come on. It doesn't matter if she's talking about the old or new generation. We're all still part of the Astral Express family. And now, the sweet dream is back on track. All thanks to the Trailblaze, of course. If it weren't for everyone on the Astral Express, we wouldn't be able to successfully host this Charmony Festival. Thus, with unanimous consent from the five major lineages, Penacone's family, on behalf of all family members throughout the cosmos, offer a token of appreciation to the Nameless. Oh, I wonder if it's gonna be a big one! We will transfer ownership of the Radiant Feldspar to the Astral Express. A meager appreciation that we hope you will accept with grace. Let us gift our applause and cheers to these brave and dauntless Nameless. Nameless! 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 And now, I propose a toast to Harmony, to the Trailblaze, to the future of Penacone and the universe, and to the generous Alfalfa family head, Mr. O.T. Alfalfa. Cheers! Cheers! <sighs> to make a decision like that. This little bird is no less capable than her brother. <laughs> as well, as well. <laughs> right. But have you forgotten someone, my gray-haired friend? I put a bomb on this ship. You have ten minutes to find it. Better her. <laughs> when did this get shoved into my hands? There are still so many bombs. Now's not the time for plot twists. I can't handle this alone. Time to create a group and inform everyone.
Let's start following the plan. You finally arrived, oh great gray-haired little one. I'm the constable around these parts, and right now, I'm posing as a bomb. But you know, this is called foreshadowing. You found me. It's my turn to complete my mission. Next, I'll count down from five and then explode. Five, four, one! Is it really that important? I'm not even a real bomb. Was it surprising, shocking, horrifying? No? Really? Fine. That's too bad then. You really want to learn how to win a girl over. At least I made some progress. We've got to keep working at it. Doctor Boom, special! 
specializes in explosives. I need your help, mister. You've had quite a few run-ins with Dr. Boom. And with the recent bomb situation, you're bound to find evidence that proves Dr. Boom is the case. The first case is the Soul Glad Factory Arson case. We found a hammer, a doll, and half a liter of unidentified fluid at the scene of the crime. Our forensics results show it's a red herring. The second case is the Blue Hour Auction Robbery. A gang of masked thugs broke in, stole a fragment of the Astral Express, and left behind a large hammer, a doll, and a half-dead red herring at the scene. Those are all the details. The way I see it, there must be a link between these two cases that will be the key to exposing Dr. Boone. I trust in your deduction. Which piece of evidence do you think is the deciding one? Wrong answer! A red herring is a fake clue to Mr. Rex. It's not meant to be evidence. Oh, oh, gray hair, gray hair. It's been so long, but you haven't changed at all. I'm sorely disappointed. But, seeing as you've put in so much effort, I'll throw you a bone. The bomb's not here. This is only a prank I've craftily set up. Hurry, time's running out. You'd better find that real bomb quickly. Diffuse? No problem. Exit 
executing self-diffusing program. This won't take long. Now playing Never Give Up, Never Surrender by the trending superstar Ast Rickley from the Epsilon 12 system. Oh, hang on. Hanakoni's family have not purchased the rights to this song. We can't play it here. How about this? I'll recite it for you. Next up, please enjoy a recital of Never Give Up, Never Surrender. Oh, aha! If you ask me how I feel about you, don't tell me that you pretend not to see. They will never give you up, never make you sad. They will never give you up, never make you cry. They will never say goodbye to you, never tell lies to hurt you. Praise, aha! Not much time left. I hope I make it. as the dawns do, destined for oblivion. You'll never get away with this. Because I'm 
just an adorable doll. Not some imaginary neutron bomb. I received a message from an unknown sender and rushed here as soon as I could. 27 minutes, 52 seconds. 27 minutes, 51 seconds. The sweet dream has lost the protection of the order. If it were to blow up here, the consequences would be unfathomable. I've scrutinized it for a long time, but the bomb's design is incredibly unique. As if it's been locked by some mysterious path force. Apart from its creator, I fear no one knows how to deactivate it. Actually, there might be another way. Do you still remember? The script said that I will experience death three times in the Land of Dreams. I think this moment heralds the third time. You may already know that I have no way of evoking dreams. I employ a Stellaron Hunter's special method in order to enter dreams instead. This allows me to perform feats that typical dream chasers can't. As long as I can bear the pain of the memoria pressure, I'll be able to dive into the primal memory zone beyond the dream and extend a lifeline to the Radiant Feldspar. I will take this bomb into the depths of the dreamscape, as deep as possible where there are no living souls around. That way, at least no one will get hurt. Don't worry. I believe that this Firefly armor will be enough to take me to where I need to go before the countdown ends. And maybe even make it back safely. At present, this is our best and most logical course of action. After all, a long story deserves a happy ending. I have some words to share with you. Though they were spoken to me by Miss Acheron. She said that the so-called impossible is merely something that is yet to happen. At the moment, there are so many things that seem impossible. But are they really never going to happen? Maybe it's just that the moment to disprove these impossibilities hasn't arrived yet. Whether it be a literal ending, suffering akin to death, or a harrowing deathscape. Before the appointed destination arrives, they are all the same. Yet I can still make myriad choices. I also firmly believe that... that when that moment arrives for us to make a choice, the answer to our end will already be within our hearts. It is not destiny that shapes us, but we who shape destiny. The Astral Express and the Stellaron Hunters are like light and shadow. We walk on different paths, intertwined, moving forward and growing together. Maybe the end is predestined, but it is not today. Human life is short, just like fireflies to a flame. So if you have an answer in your heart, always remember, don't leave with any regrets. We have this right. about other people's safety. 
Why don't you go take a closer look? <laughs> you see, everything is possible in this land of dreams. We each came here with our own goals and realized them in unimaginable ways. Regardless if the result was a sweet illusion or a bitter reality. It was an answer we longed for, day and night. So, why do people choose to slumber? I think it's as you said. Because in the end, we will wake up from our dreams. When I arrived, I happened to see a child holding it. He said the flowers were prepared by Aunt Jessie for the watchmaker and the war comrade he'd missed his whole life. Mikhail would place two bunches of flowers here year after year. And after he left, it became three. Your wishes will always be remembered by someone. Now, Panacone, as you hoped, has welcomed the dawn after a long, dark night. The path forward may not be a bed of roses, but at least people are prepared to step forth towards freedom. Tiernan, you can go home now. While the Nameless are also preparing for the next stop of their voyage. But before leaving, we still have one last thing to do. It is my honor. I've said many goodbyes. Yet I am glad that this is the first time I speak these words with a smile. But before leaving, I'm sure you all have plenty to say to the Nameless of the past. A fitting end to the tale of the departed. One could not ask for a better farewell. Go on. They're all here. Honestly, when I heard the Conductor's request, I was pretty surprised. The Nameless. Those who trailblaze, doing good deeds but never seeking recognition. After all this time, how would we even find those three people in such a vast place like Penacony? But it seems, in the land of the dreams, anything is indeed possible. History may not remember the names of the dead, but the stars will attest to their journeys. The first glimmer of light in the prolonged night often illuminates little, as it is fleeting in the darkness too vast. But because of this, people will remember as long as something shines in the night sky, then when the first star falls, countless more will follow, streaking across the horizon. Brooklyn Tiernan, Rosalina Jane Estella, we raise a toast to you, trailblazers of the Silver Rain, a toast to history that no longer remains silent the passionate and courageous pursuit, and a voyage that traverses the stars. That statue, it wasn't here last time. Looks like this is the last riddle that Mr. Gallagher left for us. In the end, we still failed to figure out his true identity, or if he was even a living person. Uh, what should I say? I mean, this guy is definitely a history fictionologist, all right. I'm suddenly reminded of the time at the theme park when he said he was only 13 years old. Could that have meant something too? Either way, he's an enigmatic character for sure. 
At least our journey together in Panacone was real enough. And his loyalty and love for this land must have been real too, right? Gallagher, we raise a toast to you, the slumbering hound. To the festival's invitation, to all lies and the singular truth. If we ever meet again, please don't talk in riddles. Is the Astro Express ready to depart Penacone? Uh, apologies, Mr. Mika, that we are only now bidding you farewell. Oh, that's all right. You've all done so much for the Watchmaker, and we are forever indebted. Allow me, as the representative of Dreamflux Reef, to make another toast to all the nameless. What will the people of Dreamflux Reef do now? Many will continue to live here. Those accustomed to being awake will mostly have a hard time getting used to a life of darkness with their eyes closed. Though the order has faded, there must be someone to watch over this primal memory zone. <sighs> Penacone's nights are long, and there are many who are still far from a good night's sleep. As for the sweet dream over there, <laughs> we're still managing without it, aren't we? Mika and residents of Dreamflux Reef, we raise a toast to you, watchers of the long dream. To your tenacity throughout time, to each sorrowful night, and to the dawn that is finally upon us. <laughs> In the end, we still came full circle. This trailblazing expedition started from the moment you and a bellboy ran into each other. After going on a journey of many twists and turns, they still ended up where they started, just like a clock's hands that turn round and round. The start and end of each day will always land on 12 o'clock. The advent of time moving forward. There shouldn't be much left to say. This entire adventure started because of you and should naturally end with you. And then, a new page will be turned. Mikhail Char Legwork, we raise a toast to you. Watchmaker of the Land of the Dreams, nameless of the Astral Express, to Penacone's past, present, future, and the child's unwavering dream unto death. With that, our duty as nameless should be complete, right? The trailblaze can illuminate the way, but ultimately, the future of a world belongs to those who live in it. Uh, I still feel that Mr. McHale must have really wanted to witness this day himself. What's on your mind, March? Just a strange feeling. I had it a few stops ago, but it's super strong this time. Why not talk about it? Maybe everyone's thinking the same thing. I can't help but think that whether it's Mr. McHale, Mr. Tiernan, or Madame Rosalina, their lives must have been long, and they must have experienced plenty of stories. They were also young once. Stumbling and bumbling around just like us. Getting into scraps and mischief. That sort of stuff. Companions, enemies, journeys, adventures. All the sad and happy memories. The every day that we're used to. They've lived through them too. But those things are all in the past. I know, but the thing that I can't get out of my mind is the present. It'll 
it'll be easier to understand if I use an analogy. Like, when you're reading a book, if one of its characters keeps running into obstacles, and experiences an ending full of regrets. We're bound to feel a bit mixed about it, right? Because we've seen every nook and cranny of their lives, we see these people as special. So, even if there are parts of it that aren't really realistic, nor logical, we still hope that their story gets a good ending when it comes. But what if they... and we... aren't really that special? When Mr. McHale sat in this chair, waiting for the Astral Express to arrive every day, what was he thinking? And if, at the end of his life, he could still firmly say he had no regrets... Then... What is this regret we feel in our hearts right now? Hmm... I think each and every one of us is searching for the answer to this very question. The universe is vast, and our lives are but specks. The trailblaze never ends, but against the backdrop of the cosmos, the average person's lifelong journey is merely a short stretch. But it is in this minuscule distance that paths cross and countless worlds connect. The universe may not remember every person who leaves a tie along the silver rail, but we will. As long as we remember, their stories will never end. And what Mr. McHale has left for us is his answer to this very question. It may not be perfect, but it left a smile on this storied, jaded old Nameless's face at the end of his life and its meaning will be interpreted by those who come after... us. It's not the answer that's important, but what we can learn from others' answers, right? This is what trailblazing is. Uh, sure. Uh, I'm really sorry for bringing down the vibe. Quick, Don Hung, tell us a dad joke to lighten the mood. <laughs> it's never a bad thing to reflect. One day, we'll all have to face our own farewells. <laughs> but before that, we still have a long way ahead of us together. So the most important thing right now is to tell the conductor what we saw in Penacony. Then prepare ourselves for our next trailblazing destination. I should get back to the Express. Or maybe I could say my final goodbye to Acheron. Do you still remember when we first arrived in Penacone? Who would have thought our paths would cross in such a way? <laughs> Come to think of it, I didn't even get a chance to formally introduce myself. Simply put, I'm a self-annihilator who was cursed by the Nihility. My hometown was destroyed a long time ago, and the whole world was erased beneath their shadow. In order to fight against the cruel end of self-destruction, I went on a journey in search of a way to sever the chains of the Nihility. After a long and grueling search, I am convinced that my destination lies within the depths of the Dark Web, where reality and the Nihility are separate. In there lurks a secret called Device Nine. One day, I'll reach it. The ocean of stars is vast. And given our destinations, I'm afraid our paths may not cross again. But the trailblazing expedition ahead is always full of unknowns. And my blade is sharp enough to sever fate. As long as we maintain our original resolve, I believe there will come a day where we will meet again. Ah. 
In that case, I must apologize for my rudeness. Do you remember when we first met? I once said you reminded me of an acquaintance. Because of the self-annihilator's curse, my memories are stripped away, blurring my past. And after our journey together, what I originally thought were familiar feelings were merely illusions. I believe this was truly our first meeting. What do you mean? It's improbable that you've crossed paths with my past self. What I mean is, there is nothing left to retrace there. Only nihility. I see. You've also had a similar experience? Then you should know that this me and your memory of me are not the same person. <laughs> Long ago, I too was like you, with irreplaceable companions. We also embarked on journeys, making the best choices we could whenever we... Unfortunately, we didn't achieve the outcome we wanted. But moments like this make me feel like they never even left. In this universe, there exist countless worlds that are similar yet different, and countless people who are alike yet distinct. I too have wandered alone, encountering acquaintances on strange worlds, seeing their silhouettes overlap with my past. In your opinion, what does this deja vu mean? Attachment, desire, longing. They may all be right, but they are all incomplete. I believe it's not something external, but something that originates within us. An emotion that traverses time from a certain moment of our past to reach us. Perhaps it's a source of warmth and happiness. Or maybe it brings pain and sorrow. Each time we reminisce on our past, we always seem to notice a tiny but unforgettable instant that we left behind us, along with certain other things that remain constant throughout. That is a summary of our lives, encapsulating everything about us in these moments, proof of our shared path. Within them, we glimpse our own essence, and thus, we truly exist, just like everyone in this story, hurtling onwards along the path of destiny with passion and courage for the things that breathe meaning into their lives. Set forth on your voyage without hesitation, Nameless, on the path of the trailblaze. Even if the ending has been predetermined, that's fine. There are countless things that humans cannot change, but before that, on the road towards the end, there are still many things that we can do. And because of this, the end will thus reveal a completely different meaning. This is the meaning of journey. All those things, beautiful before, are still so now. And I believe it will still bloom at the end of the nihility. Until we meet again, beneath the sun's rays. method of consolation is truly unsophisticated. Still better than just standing there like a scarecrow. Oh, hey, you're finally back. We told Pom Pom all about our adventure, and they suddenly started crying. I've never seen Pom Pom so sad before. <laughs> the conductor never cry. 
face. Pop Pop is never sad. Pop Pop is just, just, just angry. Yeah, angry. No matter where the express stops, you lot always manage to cause chaos. My well thought out timetable completely ignored. If you carry on like this, the express is gonna run out of fuel. That's right. Pop Pop is just angry. It's not because of Misha, Tiernan, Rosalina, and the rest. Whoa. Whoa. It's okay. Oh, Pom Pom, just let it all out. Everyone, could you all take a break in the next car? Don't worry. I'll stay here with Pom Pom. But. Let's go, March. It's okay. Oh, Pom Pom, just let it all out. would be so distraught. Those three nameless must have meant a lot to Pom Pom. No one knows exactly when Pom Pom boarded the express, but one can surmise that their journey has been filled with many hellos and goodbyes. Probably more than we can imagine. The fact that they're crying so hard is probably a good sign. It proves that Pom Pom's emotions haven't become dulled by the grind of time. They still deeply cherish every nameless who has boarded the Express and value every journey shared with them. Leave it to Himako. When it comes to comforting, there's no one better on the Express. <laughs> well, they were a little emotional at the time, but I'm afraid that's not out of the question. Since you joined us, the Express has stayed longer than anticipated at every stop along the way. And to ensure that everyone always makes it back on board, Pom Pom has had no choice but to delay the warp jump schedule. I see. <laughs> no wonder I can regularly hear Pom Pom pacing anxiously up and down the corridor. Turns out Pom Pom's been silently putting in a lot of work for us. Wow. Different from typical vehicles, the Astral Express converts every trailblaze into the energy it needs to run. Ideally, as long as trailblazing expeditions continue without interruption, the Express will receive a constant flow of energy, much like a perpetual motion machine. But, because of our previous encounters, fuel is being used up much faster than expected. We can probably only pull off Two more warp jumps, at most. Only two more? Isn't that super risky? Oh, I don't want to become an ice cube floating around in space again. W when you put it like that, it doesn't actually sound too bad. But I don't even want to become an adorable ice cube floating around in space again. Which also means that we must prudently consider our next destination. Yes, uh, I've already checked the astral charts. The two nearest worlds to us are the oceanic planet of Lushaka and the agate world Melustanen. As for which one we're headed to, that still requires a vote. Or perhaps you might consider a suggestion. Everyone, we meet again. Room? Hmm. It's a very cute room, Miss March. Just like you. Memo Keeper, let's put aside how you managed to sneak past everyone and board the Express for now. You mentioned a suggestion. I accidentally overheard how the Express obtains fuel. I just wanted to chat with everyone to see if we could work together. But now, it appears my suggestion could be the very lifeline that saves everyone. Please speak candidly. 
Depending on what you say, we could very well ask you to disembark. Ah, oh, the Permanence's descendant. What a charming little dragon. Especially with those mired memories of yours. But I digress. If the Astral Express is in urgent need of a special trailblazing expedition to recharge its engine, have you all considered this? Perhaps your destination could be a world that even the renowned Aki Vili never reached. Should you be able to lay down a new stretch of silver rail, the Express may never have to worry about energy ever again. Trailblazing to a world that even Aki Vili has never been to? Is that possible? Continue, Memo Keeper. This destination of which you speak, what sort of world is it? A world that many across the universe don't even know exists. A world hidden away from outside observation. Its presence only revealed by the light from the mirror of the Garden of Recollection. A world fettered by three paths, its destiny hanging in the balance. The Eternal Land, Amphorius. I hope I'm not too late, child. <sighs> I wasn't expecting it to be you. Don't you know how many sentry posts the family has built? And how hard it is to get you out of here? <laughs> Looks like my time's up. What do you mean? What time? Negotiation, interrogation, or death. My fate lies entirely in your hands, Lady Bona Jade. The dance is done. Why bother with the compassionate pretense? and give someone who's about to die the chance to talk. Despite your fall from grace, you still look well. I'm very glad to see that you're so full of verve. <sighs> Do not insult my pride with half-veiled sarcasm. Have you specially come to see me just to sate your vile vanity? Oh, of course not. I merely came to fulfill your younger sister's wishes, to offer you a generous trade. That is, if you're willing to accept. Robin? To build a true haven where everyone can attain peace. That's the oath between you siblings, isn't it? If I told you there was still a chance to realize this vow, would you be willing to talk to me then? <laughs> I recognize the gravity of this question, which is why you don't have to answer me right now. Go now. You are free, O oh Chosen One, who dare to exceed his bounds. Sever your wings, descend to the mortal realm, and walk their lands. See what this world is truly like. I will not accept your charity. As I mentioned earlier, it's a trade, and you don't have to give me an answer right now. Rewards are not reaped in a day, and if there's one thing I'm best at, it's waiting. The sweet dream still continues, and the night is still long. You have plenty of time to contemplate your answer. Ah, uh, a word of advice for you before we part ways. A word of warning from someone who's been in your shoes before. Life is too short to miss out on golden opportunities. <laughs> <laughs>